If you're not a Bulls fan, here's why Chicago's Big Five of Levine, DeRozan, Zoe, Caruso, and Vucevic should scare you. While no one showed up to the parade for the Chicago Sky winning the WNBA title, the people of Chi-Town can get behind this potentially all-time great roster. It's early, but here's a prediction of what the Bulls can achieve in 2022 with their beastly roster. Before continuing, only 27.7% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you're not in that percentage, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. The roster that GM Mark Eversley constructed for 2021-22 is the best roster the organization has had since MJ retired for the second time in 1998. GM at the time back then in the late Jerry Krause failed to rebuild the Bulls after that as Chicago missed the playoffs in six consecutive seasons from 1999 to 2004. Jerry was replaced in 2003 and two years after that, led by Luol Deng, Kirk Heinrich, Eddie Curry, and Ben Gordon, the Bulls made three consecutive playoff appearances, making the second round in 07. The team also featured a young Tyson Chandler and a solid veteran up front in Antonio Brown. The Bulls bottomed out a season after that, winning just 33 games, won the draft lottery, and the Derrick Rose era began. Rose won Rookie of the Year, became a top five scorer, led Chicago to seven straight playoff appearances, won MVP in 2011, and became one of the greatest talents in franchise history. The furthest Derek led the Bulls was the conference finals where he ran into the super team heat, but D. Rose was a hometown legend nonetheless. Prime D. Rose is one of the most entertaining players I've got to watch in my lifetime. D. Rose dealt with multiple major knee surgeries, and he and the Bulls would cut ties in 2016. The Bulls would make one more playoff appearance in 2017, led by Jimmy Butler. But now it's been a full four seasons since the passionate fan base of Chicago has tasted the postseason. Since the Jordan era, while there's been some success, no Bulls roster since then has come close to carrying on the 90s winning tradition that MJ worked so hard to build up. Maybe the 2010-11 roster was close with DPOY Joakim Noah, low post threat Carlos Boozer, lockdown stopper Luol Deng, and sharpshooter Kyle Korver. Still, Rose really carried that team. Back in the 90s, while those teams were carried by Jordan, MJ had other all-time greats next to him, unlike D. Rose. The Bulls' front office was brilliant at that time, as Jordan had two Hall of Famers in Pippen and Rodman, along with elite role players like Tony Kukoc, Ron Harper, Steve Kerr, and Luke Longley. For 21 years, the Bulls haven't gotten close to matching that type of firepower with any other roster. But the Bulls combination of Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, Lonzo Ball, Alex Caruso, and Nikola Vucevic has already showed off why they have a legit chance to not only get the organization back to the playoffs, but back to the glory days they experienced a couple decades ago. Let's look at the key factors to the Chicago Bulls 21-22 attack that are scaring the rest of the NBA. As we'll get to, it's far from a top-heavy squad, the Bulls' impressive depth chart goes 1-15. through 15. To improve to 3-0 after barely beating the Pistons in the season opener on Wednesday, Chicago had a dominant performance against the same team at the United Center half a week later. Everyone talks about the Bulls' offense, but it was their defense that was zoned in. They limited Detroit to 38.6% shooting from the field and 17.9% from three-point land. From Patty Williams to Lonzo Ball, the Bulls have some solid, underrated defenders. They held Detroit to just 26 points in the second and third quarter combined, leading to a decisive 97-82 win. The Bulls were active all over the floor defensively, forcing 23 turnovers, leading to 24 points. Chicago even protected the rim well with 11 blocks, including one huge stuff that Lonzo Ball made on Isaiah Stewart in the second quarter. On the other side, watch this beautiful in-and-out dribble from Debo, just a veteran move and a patented beastly take to the bucket. The sophomore Pat Williams, aka The Paw, splashed a buzzer-beating triple to end the third quarter. As mentioned in my Every NBA Team Secret Weapons video, 
Patrick Williams is the Bulls' X factor. If he's spacing the floor up for Levine and the rest of Chi Town's All Stars, giving Billy Donovan that defensive physicality, he makes the squad that much more overwhelming for opponents. Patty shot four for seven against the Pistons, but the fact that he's only getting better in year number one is something Bulls fans should really look forward to. Scottie Pippen's perimeter defense is something the 90s Bulls couldn't have won without. Certainly, Lou Waldang had a massive impact on making the Bulls an elite Eastern Conference team in the early 2010s. Patty Williams is that lockdown defender who this Bulls team is relying on to develop, stay healthy, and be there when the Bulls inevitably return to the postseason. In terms of the star power, as expected, DeMar DeRozan's taking the pressure off Zach Levine with his playmaking. DeMar's averaging 21 points and four assists through three games. Throughout his career, DeRozan's averaged at least 20 points and four assists per game six times. More importantly than DeMar's numbers, the four-time All-Star with Toronto has helped the face of the franchise in Levine raise his game to new heights. Levine's shooting 52% from the field and 45% from three-point range, which would both be career highs. And yes, it's only been three games, but in 2021, over 58 games, Levine had a shooting line of 50.7 slash 41.9, so it's not a bad bet to assume Zach will average around that aforementioned efficiency in 21-22. While he's got a lot more help, Zach's still carrying like it's January, shout out to Flight for that reference, but Levine's averaging 27-5-6, even with high volume scores like Debo, Lonzo, Caruso, and Vucevic, all getting a decent amount of shots per game. Zach's become such a well-rounded scorer and playmaker in terms of how he's able to maneuver around pin downs off the ball, as well as cut to the basket. Early on in his career, everyone knew he was a slasher, of course he was the dunk champ, but we weren't aware of his shot creating off the dribble, but now everyone knows about those two elements, but failed to respect Levine's ability to execute any given offensive playset. Levine's also been a criminally underrated defensive player for a few years now. Lonzo and Vucevic running pick and roll sets while Levine and Debo space the floor has become an attack that's fooled the Bulls' opponents in their first seven games between the pre and regular season. It's going to be insane to see how far this Chi Town team goes because right now, the firepower they're showing off leads me to believe it's going to be a special season in the Chi. Like Steph Curry, who I talked about yesterday, Lonzo Ball is playing the best basketball of his career. Unlike the chef who will be a warrior for life, Lonzo's adjusting to a new offensive scheme, a new coach, different personnel, and a new home city. Given a floor general thrives off being comfortable to succeed, it can take time for a point guard to adjust to all that. For Lonzo Ball, it hasn't been a problem whatsoever. After stepping up his play in big time fashion last year in the Big Easy, Lonzo's on pace for another breakout season. Zoe's been sensational so far, and so has the two-time All-Star up front in Nikola Vucevic. Vuce may have to be one of the players who sees his scoring fall off for the betterment of the team, but his efficiency should improve. The most crucial aspect that the Swiss contributes to the Shy is the beastly rebounding he provides. Coach Donovan doesn't necessarily need Nikola to be that 20 and 10 guy that he's been in like 10 different seasons, but he does need Vooch to be dropping 15 to 20 rebound games on a nightly basis. If Nikola can commit to getting the Bulls extra possessions and being the old school big man who can of course pop out for a three every now and then but mostly rebound the hell out of the ball, then that'll be a big time factor to the Bulls' success. Last but not least, the Bulls headed Mamba, the GOAT, the MVP, Alex Caruso. Bringing the Caruso to Madison Street, the two-way impact of the GOAT continues to prove itself as electric. Alex has racked up three steals and one block per game so far. More impressively, he's made 60% of his triples. I think this has a number one to number three seed written all over it, but how far can the Bulls go in your opinion? Let me know in the comments. Maybe you think I'm overreacting like the typical NBA YouTuber. Give me your thoughts in the comments section. This was D-Flow. You're the best for sticking around, and I'll see you next video.